Welcome to the DIY3DTech.com channel. Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to be following up on the uh, on building the tripod adapter for the maker rail that we did in the last episode in Inkscape. So basically, we're we're in Laser Draw 3. I'm not sure how well this is going to come out with the uh, the sheen of this screen, if you can, how well you can see this. Um, however, I'll kind of walk through the various pieces. So I set up basically to give it to give it a bit of room, a 250 millimeter by 250 millimeter square working area. I've imported the BMP. Now the one piece is when you import the BMP, my recommendation is go to File and then go to Open and then open the BMP. And then once you select it, as you might remember I was mentioning in the last episode, what will happen when you do it like that, it will expand the BMP to fit whatever work area you have. Now you can go about this a couple different ways. You can find your work area the size of the square, or you can go back in and redefine your BMP to match your size. So uh, if you remember, I mentioned in the Inkscape tutorial to record the size of the object that you exported as PNG and here we basically had uh, 190 by 190 now this rescaled slightly because I was at 190 190.317 uh, and then 190.70 now since this is a square uh, didn't perfectly match those and I don't have the ratio locked but um, Oh, yes, I do, actually. I lied. So, um, what you do want to do is uncheck proportional, and then, uh, basically, I need to change this to 317, and hit enter. So, I'm now at a width of 190.317, and a height of 190.070. I've unchecked proportional down here so I can be skewed a little bit to match what I've uh, exported in uh, Inkscape. And so now down here, uh, anti-counterfeit lines is set to 1.27. Now this, I, I, I'm not sure totally, and if, if you have more information, please comment below. This seems to affect the line cutting abilities of some of the thinner lines. So. Uh, anyways, I, I'm not sure if this is trying to identify a curve or what have you. So, uh, so we're basically set there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to click, you know, the the engraved piece. So we've got to set the cutting. We're going to cut at um, the six six millimeters. Actually, one of the things I'm going to probably do is drop this down to five because of the bigger area. So uh, I'll get pretty effective around here, but I'll lose effectiveness out here as I move further out away from the origin. So um, I'll slow it down by about another uh, millimeter a second. Uh, I, I usually put in two repeats, or, or you know, repeat two. And uh, I'm in this case, I'm going to uncheck don't go back or, or do not back so I do want it to return to the home position when I'm done uh, and the reason I do the, the two is if I come up a little bit short you know I, you know maybe the material doesn't fully cut it's still all indexed correctly I can just hit run the next task and it'll repeat and you know most of the time you know I salvage the work because once the work moves on the bed then you're just screwed it's, it's waste it's waste product so anyways uh, let's kind of cut over to the printer a second, or the cutter. So here we are looking at the uh, laser cutter. So I've got my spot indexed over here, ready to go. Uh, aiming lasers on. I've got the, um, the pin set to the correct height for the material. So basically I'm ready to go. You can hear the machine running. The, um, the fans are going inside. The water's pumping. The air is pressurizing, so we're all good there. I'm going to be running this. I'm not sure if you can see this. I'm going to run this at 96%. I, I just run this this full out. Um, 
I just find it just works better if you run it at the higher end. Um, anyways, so let's uh, cut some material. Okay, we're back. So as you saw, we uh, we cut out the uh, pieces, so we have them here. Um, but an interesting piece, you notice we put in those shims in the last video. They did not cut out. So uh, there, there's something with the line thickness, and I actually, as you sort of might remember, I, I sort of underneath my breath mentioned I was going to leave them alone in, in the last video um, and, and see... Uh, what happened? So, uh, it looks like this this back one here too. I might have to clean up a little bit um, because as it get, gets to the bottom of the bed, um, the the power dissipates. It's you know because again, remember this is meant to be the, the strongest here. And even though I've realigned this whole thing, we still have uh, some challenges. So I've got a pretty nice fit, a pretty tight fit with the. Uh, the bolt and the nut which I, I wanted so it's going to be held in here so I'm going to have to do some adjustments with this and uh, interesting little extra pieces one of the things that I do is, is I save these sort of extra pieces if they're of some sustenance you know like the little pieces that fall down there I don't um, just for uh, uh, basically reuse uh, because again these can work out to be great shims. I can put them on the drill, drill out a hole in them for washers. So, again, great reuse of, of that. So, anyways, here we go. Here's what we got. I'm going to have to clean these up a little bit, um, take some of the film off. So, let's go see what we got. Okay, here's what we basically worked up. So, we, we did hit a couple snags. This, this cut out well and, and all that. That was good. But one of the problems that we did have, and I kind of was fearing that uh, I was going to have this problem, is one one of the things the uh, on tripods there's not a lot that sticks up. Uh, I think probably less than a quarter of an inch. So part of the problem is that well, I was hoping that that three three millimeters would allow me enough for a little short to stick through. And I think as you can see here. It basically doesn't stick through at three millimeters, so basically I had to take the bottom plate off for this. I do like the idea that this is, if we go back here, this does give it a lot of surface area to connect to. Um, I don't have this tightened down to the rail right now, so it does wiggle a little bit. I just wanted to show it. So it does give it quite a bit of surface area to this, but it is hitting the nut. So um, first, before coming in contact with the surface, because it's pulled down. And that was the idea behind having that other piece in here is it would pull against that surface and, and not wiggle and provide more support. So I, I'm going to have to work on this a little bit. I think what I may have to do is, is use a piece of sheet good that's uh, maybe a millimeter or so to hold that force against it and, and cut it from two different sets of material because the, the uh, two sheets of white... If I can kind of turn this over that, that I used here, give it a nice separation for the nut. I really like the looks of this versus you know how it how it looks. Um, it looks beefy here. The other piece that I like about having this much surface area is, is again, as I mentioned, 
I wanted to make sure I've, I got good contact here, and if that other plate worked, I would have. Uh, but it, it still also gives me working area here to, to mount other things because uh, is if I if I were to say, for example, you know, want to put put like an Arduino mounting, which I'm thinking about, I, I could actually do that. Mount the Arduino controller here. Uh, for it, well, it might might be a little bit close because of the rails and how it runs, but it, it, you kind of get the idea. It gives me the uh, the option to do various things with this. So, uh, anyways, um, that's but this is also part, you know, uh, trial and error. I think it's an important part to also share with this. So, um, I was hoping I had a little bit, and, and I probably should have measured it uh, to be doubly sure, but I thought I would actually take the chance, and it, it didn't work out. So what I probably actually end up doing is is taking some thinner material, cutting out maybe uh, using some one millimeter plastic, or I may actually even 3D print a, a bottom piece to go on here to hold it that recesses the nut um, instead. So, but anyways, you kind of get to see how this comes together. You kind of get to see how Inkscape works uh, with this, and you kind of uh, get to see sort of the design logic of how we use this piece. You also got to see how utilizing the smaller line width simply in the laser draw for some reason didn't print out. So you can kind of learn from, from my trials and errors too. So that's kind of the idea is the more you can learn from others and, and the less you repeat yourself, the, the further off uh, we all will. And again, sharing this kind of stuff is important. So you kind of get the idea that I'm going for here because I think, um, and I'll move it over here. You can, yeah, if I can actually move this without jerking around too much, you can kind of see in the background there the uh, the slider that I'm working with. And my idea was, is again, to mount that on top of this tripod um, to get various angles and aspects. And I think I'm getting pretty close. Um, I just have to do a little bit more work on this. And again, when I do the camera slider video, I'll kind of share what I come up with. So again, I think what I'm just simply going to do is try to get a thinner piece to print that bottom uh, because the nut is holding it uh, and then I might probably epoxy that in and the fact is that I have to let me swing this back around um, since since the nuts being retained in here and these two bolts are also passing through here it's transferring um, the stress into this beam here. I think it should be okay if I go with a smaller piece for the bit I'm doing. The biggest thing I don't, I, I'm trying to achieve, and I should probably share that, is mechanically there's enough attachment here with the quarter 20 for the weight and stuff I'm going to be using. Uh, what I want to do is, is, is avoid this. See how this is flopping? And this is because it's not coming in, in proper contact with this bed because the nut has pulled, pulled. Uh, basically through and if I pull this hard enough it would just pop the nut back out you know I could epoxy it and that's maybe what I will do is, is epoxy it um, with the CNC I could also machine out a pocket and place it in it and I may also do that instead of laser cutting this is take this and, and pocket it on the CNC machine I'm thinking about doing that too and then using using that it's just the laser cutter is just so quick and easy so uh, with that uh, so with this, if this helped you out, hey, click the like button, subscribe to the channel. A lot more stuff coming on this. Uh, keep an eye out again for this camera slider. One of the pieces that I, I really want to do is I'm, I'm interested in, in even producing small runs of these. Uh, once I get all the bugs worked out, I, I'm trying to keep the cost where I can sell it for, uh, you know, motorized slider, compact is one unit, sell it for under $100, $100 retail, and um, that, that, that's sort of my goal. It's being a little bit difficult, but uh, I, I think I can get there because some of the mechanics and how it all bolts together and that are giving me some challenges. But uh, if, if you're interested in that, hey, again, please let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in one of these or the concepts of this because I think I'll release it as an open source um, uh, you know, project uh, on, on open builds because I'm using the open build parts, the rails, the motors, the gears, and everything. And, and like I say, I, I'm thinking about offering maybe on Etsy or whatever the laser cutter, the, the 3D printed or CNC or the combination thereof parts um, that don't come from Maker Build to, to put it together. But 
again, the price point to me is very important, keeping it um, sub 100, and I'd like to actually keep it more so around 50, 60 bucks um, with the Arduino and everything. So anyways, uh, catch you in the next video. Cheers.